going to take a look at the Azure AD Identity Protection System in the portal.azure.com. So to start with, I'm going to go up to the menu bar here, and we're going to go to All Services, and we're going to search for Azure AD Identity Protection. Okay, you'll see Identity Protection show up in the list, and you can go ahead and click on that. Okay, from there, we'll take a look over here on the left at some different blades that are available to us. So the first one is the user risk policy. So we're gonna click on that. All right, and these are the parameters that have to be defined for your user risk policy. So first order of business would be to select the users that you're actually wanting to sign this to. Now by default, you can see here, I've got all users but I could add a group of users that I want and I could add exclusions if I wanted. In my case, I'm gonna do all users. So I'm gonna leave that the way it is. The, the second thing is conditions. So we're gonna to go to conditions and at this point you select a risk level based upon uh, the, the actual um, user that's possibly at risk. So this is a decision that's made based upon all the things that we talked about in that previous uh, video where it decides whether or not something is a low risk, medium risk, or a high risk. And this is a system and based on, upon an algorithm that Microsoft has created. Now in my case, I'm gonna say high risk. So we're gonna be looking for uh, something that's flagged as a high risk. So chances are it is definitely a compromised account. And then we'll hit select and we'll hit done. From there, we're gonna look at the access. And this is gonna be what we're gonna do uh, now we have block or we have allow, but if we choose to do allow, we're going to make the user do a password change, okay? Because chances are, if this is a high risk, the user really has had their account compromised and we would require a password change. Or if you just wanted to flat out block the user, you can block the user, okay? Uh, and at that point, I would enforce the policy, which is going to turn this on, and I would click save. So as you can see, configuring your user risk policy is pretty easy. Let's take a look at the sign-in policy, sign-in risk policy. So we'll click that. Same kind of deal. You would select your users here, specify if you wanted to do groups. Okay, and uh, I know I've said this previously, but uh, as far as inclusion and exclusions, if you added a group of users to include, uh, and then you added a group of users to exclude, the exclusion will override the inclusion. So if the users are in both groups, the exclusion would essentially take over, okay? So from there, we're gonna uh, go ahead and set our conditions here. Uh, we'll set that to high, click select, and then done, and then we're gonna go to control access. Now notice with control access here in a sign-in risk, we can choose block or we can choose allow, and if we choose allow, it says require multi-factor authentication. So in other words, if it's considered a sign-in risk, then what's going to happen to the user is they're going to be forced to perform MFA. Keep in mind, if the user does not support MFA, then it's just going to block the user. Okay. So the user does have to be signed up to utilize MFA and have a MFA license in order to do that. Okay. So I'm going to do allow on this one, but I'm going to uh, require MFA. Okay. And then at that point, I would enforce the policy, click Save. Speaking of which, if you wanted to go further, uh, I know I've, I've discussed MFA, but here's an MFA registration policy you could look at as well. But here's the little reports I was also talking about. So you have risky users. You can see if you've got any risky users that have logged in, and as you can see, I don't. Uh, I also have the ability to download this little report if I want. It'll put it in like a little spreadsheet CSV file for you. All right, uh, you can also filter this report. So if you had a very long list of, uh, of users here that was listed, you could filter, show certain dates, the risky states, all that. So then we've got risky sign-ins right here. This would show you any risky sign-ins that have occurred. Same kind of deal, you can filter if you want, you can export the data, download the data. And then lastly, we have risk detection. So this is gonna show everything in general uh, over and by default as you can see the last seven days but of course if I wanted to I could alter this uh, these filters change this around and you know um, sort by detection time user IP address location all that stuff if I wanted to so it's actually really easy to see the different uh, risks that are going on in your environment of course 
uh, in my little trial environment here. As you can see, I don't have much going on, but I'm definitely in a legit environment. If you actually are managing a Microsoft 365 environment, I encourage you to go and check out uh, these objects here to see what risk you've got in your environment. All in all, I hope you'll find that Azure AD Identity Protection is a pretty easy system to, to manage and uh, control. Just a matter of going and finding the, the right blade you're looking for, user risk policy, sign in risk policy, and, and uh, enabling the conditions you want. Hey, this is John Christopher. I hope you enjoyed that video, and I want you to know that I'm trying really hard to grow this channel, so I hope you'll give me a like and a subscribe. Also, if you'll check the description in this video, I've got a link for you that can show you how you can get access to all my different courses. I have lots of different Microsoft certification courses that'll help you pass your exam. All right, thanks a lot for watching the video, and I hope to see you again.